All right, here we go with signal flow. This is just meant to be. This yep. is what we're supposed to do. Okay, we got the mic, line. That's right. We got your pad or attenuation, your preamp, mic line switch, EQ, input fader. That's your direct. Yeah. Bus pan, bus assign, ACN, bus output. Multi-track. Bueno. Bus tape switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. VU meter. Yeah. Monitor fader. Yeah. Monitor pan. Yeah. Stereo ACN. Yeah. Stereo master fader. Yeah. Two track. Yeah. Switching bank. And then we have your control room volume. Fucking awesome. yeah. Fellas, I think I understand signal flow. <laughs> yeah. What it do, YouTube? Paul the fifth here of Legacy Studios Nash. I am your favorite Indian guy living right here in Nashville, Tennessee. How are all my musicians, engineers, and super producers doing? I hope this is finding you healthy and well. Now, in my last video, I was portraying a character from a movie series known as The Matrix. I was trying to portray none other than Morpheus. We're talking about the red versus the blue pill. Since you are watching today, you obviously decided to take that red pill. Now, that is just a metaphor or an idea or analogy for going down this rabbit hole, as Morpheus called it, or basically taking a path and we're going on a journey together. We're learning more about music and audio production. So thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be covering that a lot today. Also, in the beginning of this video, I played a little clip from my past. That was when I was a student at the recording workshop in Chillicothe, Ohio. Now you might notice I put 2008 slash 2015. I went to the Rec W two different times and that was a clip from 2015, right before I moved here to Nashville. The reason I posted that clip is I was going over analog signal flow. In 2008, the program was eight weeks, and fast forwarding to 2015, the program was shortened, it was condensed, it was only about seven weeks. Both times that I went, guess what? Signal flow comprised the whole entire first week. That's how important signal flow is. It's an important subject and we are covering it in depth today. Now, do you remember towards the end of the last video when I said what you can expect from me? It's a new year, so I wanna start from the ground and we wanna build our way up in this music production thing. So I wanna start with signal flow as that relates to analog consoles and digital consoles as well. That's right, I am a man of my word and true to today in this box, it is the subject of today's content. In box 18, I have got myself an analog console. It's a Mackie, and you already know where I got it from. My favorite website, my favorite music store. That's right, Sweetwater in Fort Wayne, Indiana. I called my rep last week, his name is Matt South. If you need a rep or want more information about Sweetwater or the Rec W, I will have links for them in the description. While you're there, I invite you to go ahead and smash that red subscribe button so we can grow this channel together. So for today's video, it's all about analog signal flow. I'm breaking this down into three different parts. Part number one, we are opening up box 18. We'll be taking a look at the Mackie console. I'm gonna plug it into my Mac Mini, which is right behind the box. We'll be going through everything from the top of the console to the bottom fader. Please do not get overwhelmed when you see a console like this. If you can understand one channel strip, you can understand the rest of them. We'll make this simple and fun. Part number two, what the heck is signal flow? In this part of the video, I'll be breaking down what analog signal flow and signal flow in general actually is. And it is my goal by the end of the video that if you have yourself an analog console, you'll be able to plug in a microphone, no matter whether it's dynamic or a condenser, set up good gain staging, get a good signal, 
and be able to plug in some speakers as well. So that brings me to part number three. Right here, I've got a dynamic mic, and over here, I've got my Warm Audio FET 47 Junior, which is a condenser microphone. We'll be plugging both of these microphones into the analog console, and then we'll be plugging in some speakers as well. If you are ready to learn about analog signal flow, let's go. Yo, my name is Paul the Fear. Let's do this, shall we? I say yes. All right, so you already know what I'm about to tell you. Cut away from yourself when you open up any box. Here we go. I don't know what my crazy ass neighbor is doing. Beautiful. Here we go. We've got our thank you letter. We have our bag of sweets. My favorite, the bit of honey. We've got our select gear. Ah, here it is, here it is. This is the Mackie Pro FX 12V3. It's a 12 channel analog mixer. Let's open her up away from yourself. Now this does come with Pro Tools first and then a program called Waveform OEM. There she is, isn't this beautiful? And right here we've got our power supply and USB cable. Here is all our registration, we've got software and plugins included. So Pro Tools first and the OEM software. Hey guys, wanna see something pretty gnarly? Yeah, check this out. Hopefully the camera's getting it. Do you see this right here? Hopefully the camera got that, but that's where they just removed a 3.2 inch cyst from the back of my neck. Holy hell, Batman, much bigger than I thought. That's what she said. <laughs> Anyhow, I feel a hundred times better. I feel so much lighter, like a hundred pound weight has been lifted from me. Test results come back in about two weeks, but I feel like me again. Part two. This section is the meat potatoes of the content. This part here is where we're going to be breaking down this Mackie analog console. I'll be explaining everything from up here, down here, its function. But as long as you can understand this channel strip here, you can understand the rest of them. So what the heck are these here? It looks like you've got three spots, like an upside down bowling ball, maybe. And then what the heck are these empty silver holes here? And why do we have these color-coded knobs? And this looks like Mutti? Oh, it's, it's a mute button. And what do we have down here? What are these for? And what is this funny looking thing? And what does this section do? That's our power light, so I understand that, but why the heck is this red light on and why will it not stop flashing at me? All that is explained in this part of the video. Let's get into it. 
Signal flow and why is it so darn important to you? Well, signal flow is simply this. It starts with your source. For example, right now my source is my voice. It's getting captured by this wireless mic lav. It's going to my transmitter, that's going to the receiver, that's being plugged into my iPhone 13 Pro Max, that's being captured by the phone. Your source could be a number of things. It could be your voice, it could be snapping fingers, clapping hands, it could be this, it could be an instrument. It all starts by getting plugged into your mixer or your interface, and it comes down through here, it goes to your fader, it could get routed to this channel here, it goes up, and it comes out your master fader. Signal flow explained in a nutshell. Bye. No, it's a little more complex than that, but that is the basis of it. It's the way your signal comes into the board, the way it's routed throughout, and how it exits. Now, why is this so important? Here's why it's so important. You, as a recording engineer, mix engineer, or super producer, will inevitably run into problems at some point in your career. And having the ability to stay calm, knowing that flow of the signal can help you get things rectified quickly. So let's say you run into a problem. What could it be? Maybe it's your source. Maybe the mic gain is not turned up enough. Maybe your interface isn't even turned on at all. Maybe it is, but the volume's not up on your speakers. Maybe this fader's not turned up. Maybe you have something that's muted. Maybe there's an issue with the microphone. Maybe it's the cable. It could be a number of things from the source that's getting routed into the console all the way down here to the way it's set up. Here's another reason why it's important. When you have a paying client, let's say $20 an hour, maybe up to 50, maybe they're paying a day rate of $1,500 for you to record that band. They're from out of town, they're coming in just for the day, and they gotta get this tracked. We're having bad weather tonight here in Nashville, and you may be too if you're in the Midwest from Texas to Maine. So if you don't understand that signal flow, and you have to call the manufacturer and you spend an hour trying to troubleshoot, are you gonna charge that client? I wouldn't because I know signal flow and I know how to troubleshoot things, but just something for you to keep in mind. Let's keep moving on. The first thing you'll wanna do is plug your power cable into the back of the mixer and into a power outlet. After that, plug in your USB into your computer, whether it be PC or Mac. And on the screen, here is your next prompt. Simply select yes. Here is our Mackie console. To make it this simple, we'll start with channel one or input one. The first thing we see is mic slash line onyx mic pre. What does that mean? When it comes to your source, it can be a mic, so you are getting signal from a microphone. Most likely you are capturing an artist's voice, possibly a guitar cab. It could be a xylophone, something like that. When we see the line, that's gonna let us know a line level instrument. So we're talking about a bass guitar, acoustic guitar, or something like that. If you are using one of those guitars, you will push this high Z in for impedance. Now we see here, these first two are combo jacks. What that means is you can plug in either an XLR cable or an instrument cable. Then moving down along the channel strip, we see an insert. What is this? What's its purpose? Well, back in the day when we were using strictly analog consoles, if we wanted to add an effect, we would use a Y cable. The Y cable would be plugged into the insert and it would split out. Part of it would go into your outboard gear and then it would come back into the insert. That's how you would actually get your effect. This low cut here, what does that do? Well, it'll say low cut 100 hertz. So basically, in some of my previous videos, we were talking about rolling off that dirtiness, that grunge, and that grind that we don't want there. That's what this will do here. Our gain, what is this for? If we want to use a mic or the line, we want to get our gain. That is the most important thing, gain staging. We're going to get our level to where it's just peaking into the green to yellow. Moving along on the console here, after our gain knob, we have something very unique about this console. On these first four channels, we have this compression knob here. If you don't remember what compression is, it's simply this. If I make a statement that says, what it do, YouTube? It'll take that louder part, bring it down, and then the lower part, it brings it up. So it'll be like, 
What it do, YouTube? That way you have a much more even sounding waveform. After that, my favorite color, these three knobs here in blue are the EQ. We have your high band going up to 12 kilohertz, your mid range, 2.5K, then your low at 80 hertz. Moving along from our EQ is the auxes or effects to your aux. Right here, this is what the artist will hear in either their headphones. If it's a live setting, that's what they may hear in their monitors. Right here is your effects to the monitor. So we are currently on effect two, warm lounge. If we turn that up and then we turn this effects to monitor up, that's how much they'll hear in their in-ear monitors or in that wedge. And you'll just make sure that you have either this or this up here. And right here is your pan, meaning you can turn things to the left or to the right. Right here, the mute. No, this is mute. You push that, that's not gonna allow any sound to come out of this channel here. What do we have down here? This is your fader. So this is your level. Right here at U is unity gain. So that's basically zero. But what are these three buttons? One and two, if engaged, takes everything from channel one, routes that signal over here to right here. One and two, your effects. If you push the LR, stands for left, right, takes everything from channel one, routes it over here to your main output. This one is interesting, PFL solo. What does that mean? Do you remember when this red light was flashing at me nonstop? Well, PFL solo stands for pre-fader level solo. So it's pre this right here. So you push that, engages that switch, it lets you know that somewhere on this console, solo is engaged. Now that we understand channels one through four, you can understand the rest. Now five and six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, 12 are a little different just in the fact that you can on five and six, you can put your XLR cable in and you can do a left right here on your guitars. Same thing here on seven, eight, nine, 10. 11 to 12 is kind of unique. Let's say you're doing a wedding gig. You might want to go talk to some folks. Maybe you need to take a rest and break. Maybe you're stressed out and you need to smoke a J right here. What you can do is you can plug your phone, iPod, anything in, engage that USB 3.4, use an eighth inch cable, plug things in, put that fader up, and now you have music playing. What do we have on this section here? Your main outs. You have your left and right from XLR cables, balanced unbalanced cables with quarter inch cables going to speakers, control room, unbalanced or balanced cables for your sub out, foot switch and your headphones. Right here is your FX that we talked about just a moment ago, your blend knob. You have two phones control room. Push that up, you'll hear more from your headphones. Effects mute, mutes any effects. Right here is your main output, headphones, control room, unity gain. Right here, this is very important. If you're using a condenser microphone, you need plus 48 volts of phantom power. Push that. Quick rule of thumb. What you wanna do is plug your mic in, keep your fader down, turn that on. If someone's got headphones in, you wanna make sure that they take them out when you engage Phantom Power because it will create a pop in the click and it may hurt their ears. Cool, now that we know everything on the console, let's go ahead and plug in a microphone. We'll start with the pile mic and we'll move over to the warm audio. Let's go. This here is a dynamic microphone. It is the Pile PDMIC78. This is basically a knockoff of the most popular microphone in the world, the Shure SM57. I just got this on Amazon. It was like 13 bucks. So here's one way you can tell if a microphone is a dynamic mic. Most likely right up here on this part or somewhere on the mic, you're gonna have like these little grills. So that's a general indicator that it's dynamic. Not always, but for the most part. We're gonna plug this into input one with a great cable, it's a Megami cable, and we'll get some signal. So let me show you how to do that. So what we'll do is we'll take this part of our microphone, we'll take our cable, plug it right in like so. We'll take the male part of the cable, plug it into our mixer. And right here, we've got our low cut on. And then when I turn this knob, right now I'm being recorded into this phone here, 
with my live mic. But when I turn this gain up, over here you'll see this level set turn green or maybe flash yellow here we go check one two hello one two not much check 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 hello check one two there we go that's where we need to be now let's plug in my condenser mic it's my warm audio 47 junior fat condenser now one thing you may notice about condenser mics in general is down here they'll have a pretty decent wide body and under the capsule they're going to have either a large or small diaphragm right here a couple things to note we have a 10 db pad right here we have a 70 hertz roll off and on the front of the mic we have three different polar patterns and another thing with most microphones is you can tell the front from the back is they're always going to have the front with the company logo let's plug this in now this does need phantom power let's engage that Test, test, test. Check one, two. Mic check one, two. One, two. There we go. So about three fourths of the way up and we have signal. There we go. And that's how we plug in not only our dynamic, but our condenser mic. Now let's go ahead and over here, let's plug in the speakers. Here we go. We just hooked up the dynamic mic and the condenser mic. Now I've taken some steps behind the scenes, but we've got my XLRs coming out of my mains going into the big BX8As over there. Now I'm gonna show you what it sounds like when I talk into the dynamic mic. Here we go. Fader up. We're at Unity. Check, 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 check. Now you are hearing me coming out of the BX8As. Yeah, so not too bad. Let's do a couple EQ moves here. Taking the high end down a little bit. A little down on the mid range. Same thing on the low end. There we go. Muting the channel. Now you don't hear anything. There we go. Let's see if we can't get some effects on here. Hello. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. So that is how we set up an analog mixer. So this has been signal flow as it pertains to this Mackie analog console. Broke things down into three parts. Part one was the unboxing of the console. In part two, I talked about signal flow what it is specifically and we got signal routed from the console got some good gain and in part three we set up the dynamic mic as well as the condenser microphone and just now we got signal coming from the outputs to the bx8as thank you so much for watching i truly hope that you may have learned something today and if that would be the case i welcome you to go ahead and smash that subscribe button thumbs up if you like things and please as always leave me comments for next episode we are going over signal flow as it relates to interfaces in pro tools and within logic thank you so much again for watching my name is paul v and i will see you in the next one i'm out